Did you ever have a dream that you found an NVIDIA RTX 3000 series GPU in stock or an AMD 6000 series GPU? Now, if you did, which GPU would that be? Which would you buy if you actually found it in stock at MSRP? We're going to count down the top GPUs and finally answer that question. Let's get started. <music> Hey guys, Tiago here with Classical Technology. Remember to smash that like button and subscribe. If you do, I think the answer will be even clearer as to which GPU personally belongs to you. So let's talk about the top GPUs that have been released during the last year. And of course, the little dream, if you've actually found one in stock at MSRP, which one would you buy? Now, this is gonna really take price to performance into consideration because if we didn't, you would just say, oh, why don't I get a 3090 or something like that, the, you know, the most expensive GPU or a 6900 XT, whatever it may be. But we're gonna really juggle all of the factors here. Basically, put yourself in this position. You've been looking for a GPU for perhaps weeks, months, at this point, maybe even years, and you happen to stroll down to an imaginary store. It could be a local brick and mortar store or even an online store and you happen to find the GPU that you've always wanted for the exact MSRP price that you know it should be. No weird scalper pricing, no inflated third-party AIB pricing, just the original MSRP pricing as they came out previously. You're not even asking for anything crazy like a discount or a game bundle. You just want to pay the price that the manufacturer suggests for this GPU. Just a fair price. That's it. You don't need anything else. Any CD keys, any code anything else. So if that happens, which GPU is going to be the most likely that you should impulsively buy on the spot because it's going to be a great performing value for your money. So let's count down the top GPUs that we've seen lately and that way we'll be able to answer that question finally at the end. All right, so let's start at the bottom of the list and we're going to start here actually with the RTX 3090. I'm going to be assuming that you're a typical gamer and that you want the best performance bang for your buck. The RTX 3090 is a great GPU, don't get me wrong. 24 gigabytes of VRAM and some of the fastest gaming performance across the board at 4K and even 8K. And if you really want to splurge, you can even put two of them together in SLI. I actually did that and I don't recommend it to anybody. It was a little bit of a fun experiment and of course it's absolutely useless, so I certainly wouldn't recommend that you do that. So this is coming at the bottom of the list simply because it's way too expensive. Let's take it at its original MSRP. Remember, we're talking about a dream MSRP here, which sometimes is possible. I mean, look at the last Best Buy drop. People got Founders Editions at MSRP and it just happened literally last week. So $14.99 very, very expensive for what it is. I know with this inflated market, it seems like a good price compared to $2,000 plus 3090s or even a 3080 Ti, but the 3090 at $1499, when it was announced, people really sort of gawked at it. The enthusiasts that want that high performance and don't care about paying for it were okay with it, but the typical gamer that really values price to performance really was not too happy with this GPU. So if you happen to run into a store, see it in stock, I would say it's one you should likely avoid and look for something else. Now, this is actually a pretty realistic scenario just because the 3090 tends to pop up in stock a lot more often than the other GPUs that we're gonna talk about. So this is actually a very realistic scenario. And of course, you're not necessarily gonna find that 1499 MSRP, but generally I would avoid this unless you wanna spend big bucks for very marginal performance gains. And along the same line, to be fair is the next GPU, the 6900 XT. Now, AMD did a terrific job with the 6900 XT and its original MSRP of $999 is actually $500 less than the RTX 3090. And as people know, you're gonna get very similar performance across the board in terms of traditional rasterization. Where the NVIDIA GPUs have a clear advantage is when you wanna play with ray tracing or perhaps you activate NVIDIA's DLSS, which basically super sampling. The technology gives you very high performance and still beautiful visuals. That's really a very potent combination, which AMD has not been able to sort of answer perfectly yet. They have their own FSR and different solutions like that. But if you're buying a GPU on the caliber of a 6900 XT compared to a 3090, if you're going to be paying a thousand bucks or more, do you really want to not use ray tracing and the newest technologies? You buy those GPUs because you're most likely playing at 4K and you want all all of the eye candy turned on and there's nothing that says minimal sort of improvement in eye candy like ray tracing 
racing. So for that, that's why I think the 6900 XT likely really not worth it if you happen to catch it in stock. And of course, even its smaller brethren, the 6800 XT, which the MSRP of 579 is considerably cheaper than $999. That GPU performs almost as well as a 6900 XT. And of course, it's going to have the same limitations. And that's where you have to kind of pit it up against NVIDIA. But if you're on the AMD side, the 6800 XT definitely is a little bit more attractive than the 6900 XT. So swinging back to the NVIDIA side, if you see a 3080 Ti, should you buy it? Now, this is going to be a little bit trickier with the original MSRP of $1199. It is cheaper than a 3090, and it does perform basically just as well in gaming as a 3090. But typically, the Founder Edition cooler will just be a two-slot compared to the three-slot 3090. So it does run really hot, draws almost the same amount of power as a 3090. And of course, it has half the amount of VRAM. So if you're a gamer, this should definitely be a high-performing GPU, but you're still paying a premium even at $1199 for the performance of this GPU because as we see as we go down the list there are some GPUs that price to performance is going to be even more superior to something like the 3080 Ti and more specifically I'm talking about the next one on our list that's going to be the RTX 3080 at an MSRP of $699. That's a pretty sweet spot combination of performance and value. I think now if you ask anybody, even people that were looking more to do budget PC gaming, if they would slam down $699 for a 3080, I think almost everybody would. Previously, that was a pretty expensive GPU if we look back at like the 1080 Ti. Only the 2080 Ti really brought this up to really higher levels, around $1,200. So $699 for a 3080 is really the sweet spot and the 3080 will be really in contention for the best GPU you could buy if you happen to find it in stock as the beginning of the video said. So, so far that's going to be the one that's number one on the list. We'll see if it can win the top spot at the end of the video. Now, next up on the list, of course, we already mentioned AMD 6900 XT versus sort of the 6800 XT. 6800 XT against the 3080, definitely an interesting value proposition. If we follow the original MSRP of 649 on the 6800 XT. I still think most people would rather pay that 50 bucks extra to get the RTX 3080 due to Nvidia having that advantage in ray tracing as well as DLSS as well as everything else like NVENC and the encoders and Nvidia specific technologies. That's pretty much starting to get a little bit tougher but I think the 3080 still pulls ahead. Of course the 6800 is going to be sort of a tier lower and then one note on the VRAM if you happen to think you need 16 gigabytes of VRAM then by all means snap up that 6800 XT as the 10 gigabyte of VRAM on the 3080 is really the only thing holding it back a little bit. That's really going to be the only drawback. If you really need more, you either go to a 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes or you got to go to one of the AMD GPUs with 16. But as it is now, unless you have a very specific use case, most likely 10 gigabytes of VRAM is okay for now. But remember, some games are already starting to sort of push that threshold. So in the future, you certainly want to consider that VRAM allocation. But for now, we're discussing seen sort of what's best on the market price to performance and I still think the 3080 beats out that 6800 XT. So as we get a little bit further down the list, 3070 Ti, definitely an interesting GPU and actually one you're more likely to find in stock than most of the other GPUs. At least recently, the last Best Buy drop had a considerable amount of these GPU available compared to maybe less, a more meager option in terms of 3080s and things like that. Now, it's not quite a 3080, but certainly it does perform really well. And if you follow the original MSRP of 599, that's certainly not bad at all. I think that's a really great price if you get it around that. Of course, we're talking about original MSRPs because this is of course a dream scenario when you can walk into a store and actually find them. If we look at real street prices they're closer to a thousand bucks which is pretty crazy and still hundred dollar difference I don't know I think the 3080 is still gonna be the superior GPU. I would say I would prefer a 6800 XT over a 3070 Ti and then a 3080 over that 6800 XT probably something like that in that order. So as we get to the 3070, 
$4.99 is another fantastic sweet spot. And then if we put that 6800 XT maybe in the second slot, in that second position behind the 3080, the 3070 either has to tie for second or be that third slot. I think the 3070 is a fantastic sort of culmination of price, performance, sort of much more efficient coolers than some of the bigger GPUs. Remember, $4.99 when this came out, supposed to beat pretty much a 2080 Ti, which was $1,200. Even though most likely, of course, it's hard to find at that MSRP, but if you did, 3070, I think, is really highly in contention for a GPU you should definitely snap up. It's going to be basically high-end performance. Of course, the VRAM is a little bit limited, but once again, the 3080 doesn't have a huge amount more anyway. It just has the faster GDDR6X, and I do think I would take a 3070 over a 6800 XT because of all those benefits that NVIDIA has. Now, if you're really concerned about price to performance, 3060 Ti coming next on the list is certainly almost a 3070, but I still Still would take the 3070. I think it performs better than the 3060 Ti, even though if you're really, really more budget conscious and you happen to find that at the $399 price, that's certainly an incredible deal. Of course, third-party AIB uh, MSRPs are going to be more in the $400 range, but any day of the week, I would take a 3060 Ti over a 3060, which, even though it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, just does not perform anywhere near the 3060 Ti. 3060 Ti, look at it this way. It's closer to a 3070. The 3060, regardless of VRAM, is an entire tier lower than the 3060 Ti. So any day of the week, I'll take that 3060 Ti over the 3060. 6800 is also pretty interesting. At 579, even though it's more expensive than a 3070, in some games it will outpace it, but then you sort of reach that question again, do you want ray tracing and DLSS? So you're going to have to really answer those questions if that's the GPU that you find. And if you happen that you're more comfortable with NVIDIA, then I still think you kind of stay in that 3060 Ti and 3070 level. Of course, this is all sort of for the typical gamer. If you're a crypto miner, obviously you're going to want to go for non-LHR. Some of the Founder Edition GPUs are not LHR still, except the 3080 Ti as well as the 3070 Ti. And the sweet spot there does seem to be that 30. 70, 3060 Ti, those seem to be the most popular. Follow them maybe by like the 3080. And in some cases, of course, people do use the 3090 just because it's the most powerful GPU for mining and they can get sort of that return on investment faster, even though you do have to put up a lot of money up front in order to buy it. So conclusion of the video, which is the sweet spot GPU. If you walk into a store at MSRP, you just have to have it and you won't regret your decision. Best price to performance. I do still think it's the RTX 3080 followed very closely by the RTX 3070. Now, honorable mention will be something like a 6800 XT from AMD. I think they did a phenomenal job getting very close to NVIDIA this generation for what is a very fair price. The only caveat here is NVIDIA still has the lead with ray tracing, DLSS, and things like that. And believe it or not, those are very important to many gamers, as well as the fact that NVIDIA has produced more of these other GPUs compared to AMD producing significantly less units in terms of manufacturing. So that's really my opinion after really going deep into these GPUs. I think the RTX 3080 at 699, that MSRP, that's probably like the GPU of the decade. I mean, the performance is phenomenal. The only thing you could say bad about it really is that 10 gigabytes of VRAM, which up to this point really hasn't hindered many people at all. Future proofing is a different story, but by the time that's really relevant, you're going to have the 4000 series or the Super, or you're going to have much more advanced GPUs to worry about. So for now, I think the 3080, definitely the best bang for the buck. And you'll find that the market certainly agrees with me. It's often around two to three times at the MSRP when you actually have to go and buy it, like on the second hand on eBay or something like that. And of course, you can make the argument that the RTX 3070, the original one, certainly is right up there, almost tying it. I mean, $499 for that class of GPU is really just as impressive. I only choose the 3080 just because it has that little bit better performance to really make it sort of a high-end gaming GPU. In fact, I don't even think you need a 3080 Ti or a 3090. Performance of a 3080 for that price is already very, very good. Honestly, can go either way. Like I said, 3070, a very, very strong performer in its own right. And we do have to applaud AMD for being very, very competitive. All right, guys, so let me know if you agree with my choice of the 3080. Let me know what you would choose or perhaps have chosen. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.